talk to us a little bit, Simon, here about what may be different here with the King Charles and his accessibility, his sort of outreach to the public in a physical nature. Will it change much? And if so, what type of precautions need to be taken? I think we're having a little bit of issue with Simon's audio here. Um, we're going to see if we get him back. In just Hi, Simon. We can hear you now. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Good. Um, yes, it'll be the same but different uh, with regards to, to King Charles. He's had an extremely long apprenticeship to come into this role. So he's already lived a certain element of the life. The title has, the title has changed and the responsibilities have changed. With regards to how he will be perceived and what he will want to do, it will still be very similar. He will still want to go and speak to people. He will still want to try and understand what their needs are, what their concerns are. And, and as a protection officer and as a protection team, you have to facilitate this. You have to allow this to happen because that's what they want to do. It's very easy for us just to say, don't do it and, you know, put everybody behind a fence. Mm. But, you know, that's not how the monarchy is going to survive. And certainly King Charles, and as his role as the Prince of Wales, fully understood that. He knew he had to go and speak to people and mm. give people accessibility. Talk to us about the decision behind that moment. This morning, we were all sort of realizing we were watching history when we saw him get out of the car, shake people's hands, really, in a way, coming into a moment of his mother, uh, greeting the crowd. I saw the moment when he had offered someone a, in exchange a kiss on the cheek. How do you balance that uh, need for affiliation and connection with also the safety concerns as well that we know that you are so trained to protect? It's always a difficult balance and, you know, you are a professional, you've had many years of training to kind of get to this point and, you know, the protection officers are there are vastly experienced, you know, they know what they're, what they're looking for, they know what they should be expecting to see and similarly what they don't expect to see. I said, you have to strike a balance, you know, we're looking at a crowd here mm -hmm. that have come to see the new king. You are looking at faces that are, that are in a bizarre sense, happy to be there, even though it's a very uh, mournful occasion, they are happy to be there. And, and the protection officers, as you can see, are constantly, constantly looking, constantly looking at hands, constantly looking at people's non-verbal communication. Um, we in the UK allow our principal senior members of the royal family and senior government ministers to do this. And, you know, you just have to, you have to work exceptionally hard. You know, those protection officers will be for that short space that that, that walkabout yeah. took, 10, 15 minutes, um, that is a real highly pressurised situation. You know, you, you really are looking forward to getting, getting back behind the wire again. Talk to us for a moment, Simon, about the enormous protection focus that now goes over the course of the next 10 days. Of course, a moment for the country to pay its respects, a funeral, that will be enormous in its nature and, of course, one to celebrate a life, but one where you have to, as a member of a consulting director of operations and training, be thinking very much about ensuring that remains safe as well. Absolutely. It's going to be massive. It's going to be the biggest policing operation the UK Police Service has ever delivered. Um, yes, you know, there's been various big occasions before with regards to um, the Princess of Wales' funeral, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge's wedding, uh, and indeed various summits like the kind of the G20. But, but this is going to be extremely unique. You're going to put um, some of the most prominent people in the world in one place at the same time. You then have to balance those security concerns with people who are going to come and pay their, their respects. And, you know, there was certainly a, an outpouring of grief when the Princess of Wales passed away and we saw how many people came onto the streets of London. I think that is going to be magnified tenfold. So you have a security issue, you have a, a public safety issue as well. And certainly, you know, the planners who have had uh, London Bridge in their sights for, for many years. Mm -hmm. They're now looking at how that fits, 
How does it fit with the with the current climate, the current threat assessment, the geography of where things are going to take place? The, the Queen's coffin will have to come down from, from Scotland, so through many different police forces and jurisdictions throughout the UK before it actually arrives in London. So yeah. it's an extremely big piece of work, and my former colleagues have got many, many long hours ahead of them uh, over the next, uh, what is going to be the next 10 days. Simon Morgan, thank you so much. A man with a wealth of experience, formerly the personal protection officer to the Queen, and then, of course, Prince Charles, who is, of course, anointed King Charles III.